uh, the Olympic Games. Um, they asked me, coach, will you do that? I said, no, I will not do that. Why? I need to have respect for the coach who qualified the U23 for, um, for Japan. I will not come now and put him out and say I will do it. I have confidence with him. I will have a meeting in the next days with him. We will discuss about it. But he is the coach of the Olympic game, of the Olympic uh, uh, team, of the U23. So I think he needs the respect to coach them also in Japan. And I will be monitoring the games. There will be no problem. I will be in contact with him. But he will stay the coach. He will be the coach of, those, of this team. And I think I have to respect that. That's why I will not coaching the Olympic uh, team, the U23, but it will be the coach of, uh, of, that, uh, of that team. Why I wanted absolutely a South African coach. You know, he will be the one who will be a great help to me in the first weeks, the first months. Because he knows African football. He knows African players. He knows the culture. He will help me a lot. Even when I have the experience of Africa with Cameroon, this is a different country with different things, with different culture also. So he will help me a lot. And that's why next to my Belgian coach, assistant coach, I needed, I needed um, a South African coach. I will also put my experience to him because there is something like Chan or Kosava or Mandela Cup. He will, he will coach that. But I will put my experience. So I think there will be a good connection between Bafana Bafana and the other teams. Teams who will play in Shan, who will play in the other competitions. Uh, but not only that, uh, there will be connection with other coaches too. Uh, my U24, uh, by 23, U21, U, U. I think it's very important to have uh, a global um, um, view on what happens beneath Bafana Bafana. And it will be important also for the future that I following that and that I can choose and I can decide this is the player for Bafana Bafana. Um, my Belgium assistant is not here for the moment because he's still working in Cyprus. He plays with his team uh, next Sunday, the cup final. So and afterwards he will come uh, to South Africa and he will be here to coach together with the um, uh, South African assistant coach to coach those two games in June. We were looking for opponents. So we will see which teams of which, country, which countries we will play uh, them. Um, his name is Che Dojanevski. Uh, you will tell me, coach, this is not a Belgian name. <laughs> and you are right. So he's from Macedonia, but he's living already, I think, 25 years, 30 years in Belgium. He was a player before. He played in Bruges in, uh, in Belgium. He was married with a Belgian, so he's Belgium. He, he talks English, he talks French, he talks uh, uh, Dutch. So there will be no problem with foreign languages. There will be no problem for experience. He was coached from Bruges. I think now, uh, nearly 20 years ago, he won the cup with Bruges. He was a uh, coach in Greece. He was uh, the coach of the national team of Macedonia. So I think um, he is an experienced coach. And uh, I have to say, I have to be honest, he's a friend of mine. So the working together will be 100%. I know him in a very long time, and I'm very happy um, that... Um, the committee agreed that I uh, bring this Belgian coach with me. I think he will arrive at the end of uh, next week. About the uh, uh, South African assistant, um, I'm discussing now, I'm analyzing now with the committee who will be. So I can't tell you who, but it will be in the next days. I think it will be, it will be a declaration 
of uh, who will be the uh, South African uh, uh, coach. And again, again, he will be important. And when you're talking about, and it's the same for the Belgium coach, when you're talking about an assistant coach, the accent is on coach, not assistant. It's not like the old-fashioned assistant coach who putting the cones and the lines and everything on the field, and then the head coach is coming and he's giving training. I will not give him much training, because I think the most important thing when you have training is observing what's happening on training. So they will have to work. There will not be someone who is there and who will have no responsibility. No, they are coaches. And that's why it's so important that when you choose one, that you make the right choice. So we made already the choice because the committee has confidence in me about Chedorianevsky, but about the South African coach, I think we have to negotiate, we have to discuss, and we have to take the right decision. I think this is a little, a little bit what I have to say now, and um, I'm waiting on the questions, if there are some questions to ask. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Coach. Uh, let's now open the floor for questions. If you can just say your name, your organization, and uh, let's see, try to narrow it to one question, maximum two questions. Who wants to shoot first? Um, coach, good, good morning. Can you speak loud? Yes. Yeah, that's better. Um, coach, welcome. Um, just before we get on the on-field stuff, it, name my name is oh, my name is Vuyo from Power 987. Vuyo from Power 987. Um, just before we get on the on the field stuff, Coach, I'm sure you've seen the reactions that have come in since you've been given this position, and most of them have not gone your way. And there's been sort of a lot of animosity that has been sitting in terms of your, your sort of placement into this job. Many people will talk about they would have preferred a South African coach and, and all these other things. How do you sort of deal with this sort of thing? Because, I mean, for, for South Africans, it's a very personal thing, this position that you are in. It dates back a very, very long time ago, back to 1996, and they need that revival. And the last thing they would want is somebody coming into this position just to catch a, a retirement pay check and then leave. So that's really, really important. Do you, how, do you, how do you deal with sort of animosity, whether you see it negative or whether you see it on a positive note, but how do you deal with it? And just on the last part is you, you do speak mostly about sort of having a youthful team. In, in the coming months, have you sort of prepared or are you planning to meet with sort of certain local teams uh, and engaging with them because I would feel that those are the teams that would need to prepare sort of the younger players for you that are fit enough for international standard. Yeah. <laughs> to uh, answer on your first question, um, you know when I came in, uh, in Cameroon, uh, everybody was telling me, ha, coach, You've never been a coach in Africa. You don't have an African experience. I have to deal with 23 million coaches because there are 23 million habitants in Cameroon. So what I have to say, or what I want to say with that is that I have the experience to be under pressure. I know, I know this country um, is looking forward to success. And I'm not afraid of that. I know they will be uh, criticizing me. This is the job of a coach. I have the experience with that. So I'm not afraid of that. And I'm not coming here eh, to have a retirement check um, and then go back to my country and uh, with no success. And I'm not like that. If you look at my CV, um, it's a CV, plenty of successes, because I want success, I want to win. I'm very angry and I'm very disappointed when I lose. I don't want to lose. I don't want that. But I know, and you have to know, that it's not only me. I have to build a team around me. A team who's looking at the same direction and who's knowing that there is only one thing one thing important, and that's the team. So not an individual, 
know the team. We have to create here a team, and it's technical, it's medical, it's mentally, it's whatever, but we have to create a team, and this team has to, um, has to try to try to have success in the next months, years. So this is my first thing to do here. And I'm not afraid, and it, it will be, even next week or the week after, when I, I will make the selection for the two games in June, I know that there will be some journalist or whatever who will not agree with the, the choices I make. I know that. So I know what will come. I know what will come when we lose. I'm not 25 years old. So I have a, a big experience. But I know also that when you work a lot, that there will be success. If everyone work a lot. And this is something I want to install in Bafana Bafana. Not only me, my assistants, medical staff, logistics, whatever, but also those guys here in this building. We need to work to one goal. And this is results, victories. What about uh, the local players? If I, yeah, you ask, uh, um, we will monitoring the games of the local um, competition. And I said it in the beginning, it's a little bit, um, it's a pity that the league is already so far because it's not many time to do many things. But also next um, uh, competition, so I will be back here end of July, and I normally the competition starts beginning of August. I will be there. Uh, even when I, I can't be in the stadium, there is television. You can watch the games. Uh, you can watch the games, uh, you can ask uh, the games to, and watch them on the computer. So we will make work of it. We will make work of it. Because there, there will be other players who will be as good as some players who are now in the, in the Bafana Bafana. So we will have to look not only here in this competition, but also in Europe. Hey, I get a list here from players who are playing in Europe. Hey, who, who I think who, will, who had never been here with Bafana Bafana. But who will be good players. I did the same in Cameroon. I took players who were never with the national team. And we became a uh, winner of Afghan eh? because we had a team. And maybe there are good players here in the national competition. So uh, I'm not afraid together with my assistants because I can't see all games. But with my assistants, we will be a good team to, uh, to look for uh, those games and to, to see that there are still other players who um, will be uh, Bafana Bafana. Thank you, Coach. Seppo. Thanks, Coach. Bonjour. Uh, you speak French? <laughs> no, I try to. You have no problem. You have no problem. No, no. go on. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, I'll end I'm there, sorry. Coach. Coach, uh, so in terms of the targets, like realistic targets for, for yourself and the team, what are they? Because now we're looking at, obviously, the next games are the Af uh, World Cup qualifiers now in uh, September and, uh, and, and AFCON and the other World Cup. In terms of your realistic targets, obviously you don't go into a match to lose, but I want, I'm avoiding a situation where maybe we have high expectations. Yeah. You know, I think it's important for you from the get-go to tell us your targets. So, Everyone is on the same level. Thanks. Uh, um, if there is something I want to ask from you, is patience. Um, we will do everything. And when I tell you everything, it's everything to be qualified for World Cup next year. But you have to be realistic also. It's not an easy group. You have Ghana again, and then you have two teams, two countries, Zimbabwe and Ethiopia, who are dangerous countries. It's not top level. 
in Africa. But it's tough. At the other side, as I said already before, we will try to rebuild a successful team. And you know when you're rebuilding, there are always moments of weakness. So it can happen, it can happen that we are not qualified for the World Cup. It has to be not a disappointment if we are not. Because it can happen. But it has not to be a blame. So don't be angry if we are not qualified for the World Cup. But in 23 there is AFCON. If you are not qualified for that, you can kill me. Because <laughs> this is something I want. We will, again, doing everything to be qualified for World Cup. Who don't want to go to the World Cup? Only crazy people. But okay, it will be tough. But Afghan 23, this is uh, something we need. We need to be qualified. If we don't, it will be blame on me in that moment. And if we succeed that, Afghan, then I think we are on a good way. And then 26 World Cup has to be also a must. This is between Afghan 23 and 26, we have still other Afghans. We can't accept then that we don't be qualified for those. So, if I um, have to, if I can, can tell you, Afghan 23, Afghan, what's then, 24, yes, 25, and um, World Cup 26. This is, this, those are the tournaments where South Africa has to be, has to be. So that has to be our goal. But again, and I repeat, we will do everything. It will be tough, but in football, you never know. You know what people said in Cameroon when we went to Gabon? What are they going to do there with that team? And we won it. Not because we were lucky, but, we, but because we built a team. So, if this, pro if this process is going quickly, it can be possible that we are in Qatar next year. But again, we will see. And that's why I ask you again, be patient with that. Don't start um, um, uh, putting everything down when the result is not good. This will be the process the next weeks, the next months. We will, be, we will have sometimes in disappointment. But in disappointments, you can progress. And that's what we are trying to do. And again, let's hope that at the end of November we are here with champagne and singing we are going to Qatar. But we will see. Thank you, Coach. Before we take the next question, uh, the media has been asking that. What is the name of uh, the Belgian assistant coach? What, what is the name of the assistant coach? Cedo Janewski. It's uh, written C-E-D-O then G-A-N E V K I. Just go through that again, coach. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like in school, huh? <laughs> the teacher has it. Can you take the next question, Namta? Uh, next question, Ganyiso. Oh, sorry, uh, Coach, I'll stand up. Um, Mark Strait on uh, Times Live, Sowetan Live. Uh, Coach, just in terms of the players you have available and the challenges that's, of course, presented to all your predecessors, um, if you look at the last Nations Cup we competed in, in, in Egypt, every game except Namibia, they had better players than us on paper and we were the underdogs in every game. And I know a game is not one on paper. Um, and every qualifying group we go into, there's at least one team 
whether it's Ghana, whether it's the top team that is always stronger than us and that puts a lot of pressure to win the other games and you see us drawing against Seychelles, losing to Sao Tome. It obviously puts a lot of pressure on the coach, that situation. I, I know what you did with Cameroon, with missing eight players, with a team of no stars and overperforming. This team has underachieved for a long time. Um, it's qualified for three of the last seven Nations Cups. That's, that's a constant underachievement. How do you deal with that challenge? I understand you are capable of making a team overachieve. How do you deal with that challenge? And I know Dom said one question, but a second part of the question is, are you going to be involved in the development with the association? I know they were looking for that from a coach to try to change the situation going forward to improve a better class of player, produce a better class of player. Thank you. How to deal with that? <laughs> you know, um, I'm not someone who, um, who would like to be on pressure um, because I have not that character. So uh, it's not uh, because I'm on pressure that, uh, that I will do mistakes, for example, because the pressure is so, um, so big. Um, you know, uh, first of all, uh, as I said already in the beginning, uh, we have to, to rebuild the team. And once the team is there, um, a way of talking, it will be easy to have results. And if you are going to big uh, tournaments, uh, if you are, like for example Cameroon, uh, even when they didn't believe in us, for the other countries, we were a big team. <laughs> we were favorite. Cameroon is every time favorite to win Afghan. So, this is normal. Once you become, once you starting to become results, the pressure is there. And I have the experience to work always with clubs who are under that pressure. When you have been coach of Anderlecht of Bruges in Belgium, the first thing they tell you when the season begins, you have to be champion, you have to win the cup, you have to go, go far in the European Cup. So the pressure is there. So for me, it's not such a problem. But I think, I think, I talked a little bit with this one and this one. I think sometimes it's a problem for the players here to have that pressure. So this is something we have to work on. I, and that's, that's one big uh, thing I have to do here. Uh, uh, next to other things. But this is a very important item. Um, to uh, make them ready mentally. Not thinking of failure. Um, having confidence in your own qualities. And this is a work that the coach can do. And it's easier, it's easier, also a matter of speaking, but nothing is easy, but it's easier when you have a team. When players feel, first of all, that the coach is honest in his choices. There is not a coach, today it's white, tomorrow it's grey, the day after it's black, no. We start, it's white. And it's white. And, and this gives confidence to players. When they see that the team, medical staff, and so on, so on, is working in the same direction, I think this is all a good basic for the players. And then, for sure, then is the games. If you play three games and you lose three times, it's difficult to have confidence. But you can't start, and I think this is all... When I see the games of South Africa in the qualification games for Africa, for Afghan, huh? they received in even game first goal. Except Sao Sa Tome also in Sao Tome, first goal one zero Sao Tome. The other games always the opponent scores, so that means that you are not mentally ready. And and this is a big thing to work on, but. 
I know I will, I will succeed. I will know I will succeed to the confidence on this place because, because, and I think everyone agree, we have good players. We have quality players. But you know, you can have football qualities, but here, when it's not right, you can't win again. So this is something we have to work on. I know that. I know that. But I think I can succeed. And, and again, it's the way you treat the players. It's the way um, you're given confidence and, 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 and that you can explain that coming to the national team is not holiday. No. You have to perform. This has to be an honor for each player to play for his country. And we, when it's an honor, you know that you have to perform. You have responsibilities to your supporters. And, okay, now they are not there. But if there are supporters, they're paying to see you playing. So that means that you have, you have to fight, you have to do it. So those are things I, I, try, I will try to install in this team, that everyone is confident and they are coming on the field and that they know, okay, we have the uh, possibilities, we have the qualities, we will try to do it. And if we lose, it's because the opponent is stronger than we. If they are stronger, you can't blame them. But losing a game and have to say afterwards, ah, we should have been tougher, we should have been this. This is not uh, the way uh, to work. And excuse me, I forgot your second question. <laughs> When you look at the development structures, is that part of your commandment? To look at the development, the youth, the youth structures of South Development structures. <laughs> Mark's, Mark's question is that, uh, apart from the senior national team, are you going to look also at the developmental uh, players, the amateur players going upwards? You know, you know um, I will do much work, but, but um, I can't do everything. But what I will do, and I think because uh, it's the first time someone uh, uh, talked me about that, but it's also very important that, for example, amateurs, um, that the way of working is good. It's important. So I will, I will have, not immediately, but in the next months, I will try to have some meetings with the guys who are responsible for that. And we will, we will discuss about it. How can we improve um, this? Because this is important, because this is also the basic of what the highest level. Because there you make from the beginning the player we want um, with Bafana Bafana. So it's important and I will see what the problems are, because I, honestly I don't know. But if there are problems, I will try uh, with the guys who are responsible, I will try to, uh, to improve, that's for sure. Thank you, Coach. Uh, before we take uh, Maskepe, uh, there is a question from Clyde Shaw from Supersport International. Coach, he says, based on the knowledge gathered so far, what would you need from the public, media, administrators and players to get the team to where you would want it to be? What, what I need, need from what I need from them. <laughs> I, I think I, I, uh, I told you already um, that for all those guys, or all those people, men, um, there is only one thing uh, important, and that is success with Bafana Bafana. And um, not trying to have an important role uh, and uh, looking at your own, no. It's one goal, and it's uh, to build a successful team, a successful Bafana Bafana team, who will be on the big tournaments and it will be successful. Um, for the rest, I can't ask more. Uh, coach Maskebe Matuano from Power 987. Uh, my first question, which I think ordinarily I should be asking Safa, 
uh, is on the assistant coach because when I see the name Hiromir Janowski and yourself, I'm thinking your knowledge of South African football wouldn't be that much and the assistant coach then becomes a very, very integral part of uh, this coaching structure. Are you able to tell us if you have at this point spoken yourself personally, spoken to a potential assistant coach, who is he and uh, when are you hoping that uh, this uh, would, be, would be signed? Is it someone that Safa has suggested to you or you chose yourself? And then the second one is that I hear you are already writing a potential obituary of Wafana not qualifying for the World Cup. How do you think such a message is received when you say that we should not be too angry if we don't qualify for the World Cup? I mean, we are in a group with Ghana where they beat us by three points, which means we can compete. So when you are potentially writing an obituary, how do you want that to be received by South Africans? Dominic will kill me here, but I'd just like to know, do you have an exit clause in your contract, by any chance? Um, about the um, assistant coach, um, I can't tell you anything about that for the moment. Um, the only thing is that uh, if we made a choice, um, I'll have a, a meeting with him because uh, who, whoever it is, um, and he has to know the way I will work with him. Um, if he can't agree with that, okay, we are, have to look for another one. Uh, and I, again, I repeat what I said already said, um, much time. Um, we need to have a team. And if, for example, my assistant coach is not loyal, uh, he thinks that what I decide, yes, but uh, then we have a problem. So that's why um, I, I will have a meeting before and, and, and we will discuss and we will discuss about the way of working. And for sure, for sure, it has to be a coach with quality. You can't take someone who don't have experience with coaching. This is, this is normal. So we will see in the next days who, which, uh, which uh, South African coach will be my assistant. And more, I, can, I cannot say more uh, for the moment. Um, and then you asked me about... Oh. You asked about the World Cup. That if you resigned yourself, that we won't qualify. You know that is. Yes. Um, again, it will be tougher. And 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 I know <laughs> everyone is thinking about the World Cup. Also I, and don't think that I will be happy if we don't qualify for a World Cup. But again, you have to be realistic. Um, it's what, more than 10 years ago you were qualified for the World Cup? Yes. So that um, proves again how difficult it is here in Africa to qualify for the World Cup. When you see the next month, first of all, you have to be first of your group, and then you have to play again another game against a big team, surely, because they are, those are the winners of the group. And then you have to win again. And then you can go to Africa, uh, to uh, World Cup. So this is tough. And it will be tough for South Africa for the moment. Because, again, we, we, we will try to rebuild a team, a successful team. So don't be angry about that. Sometimes you have to, to have a disappointment like I said, to progress. Those games, after in November, when we play those games and we are not qualified, those games will, ha will be a good experience for the players. A very good experience. So they, they will take this experience with us to the qualification games for AFCON 23. This will be important. Very important. But again, I wish, I wish that we will be in the World Cup. I wish it and I hope it and I will do everything with my players or with my staff 
to achieve that. But again, don't kill the team if we aren't in the, on the World Cup next year. Coach Ganiso, and I know you're a good person, you ask one question. <laughs> good afternoon, Dominic. Uh, it's, two, uh, it's two short questions. Um, coach, my name is Ganiso Chwagu, and I am from Sport24. Um, my first question, um, are you able to let us in as to who is the rest of your technical team, aside from um, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the system that you announced? and the South African, the, 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 the rest of the technical team. And second, are you able to fill us in with the conversations that you may have had with South Africa's overseas space players, if, if you've already spoken to them? Um, first of all, about the overseas players, um, I have a list of overseas players. So um, <clears throat> we will analyze it. Um, I looked already a little bit at some names. And you have overseas players who don't play in the, in, in, in the club. Uh, they, they, they didn't play one game. I don't think that that's the player we are waiting for. It's not because you are playing in a European club that automatically you are ready to come to play to Bafana Bafana. So if we will take a player, a foreign player, it has to be a player who is playing, because otherwise it's no use to do that. Uh, it's not because we are rebuilding a team and that I said, OK, I will do this, I will do that, that suddenly there will be a plane full of players from Europe to be here. No. They have to have the quality. This is the most important thing, the quality. Uh, it's the same thing, as I said, uh, I will try to look for young players. What's a young player? There was somebody who, who asked me, yes, what's a young player? I said, yes, what's a young player? I said, yes, but what's a young player? I said, okay, I will tell you. Under 25, you're young. Over 25, you're old. I said, but, first of all, is the quality. Secondly, you can have an old man of 23, and you can have a young man of 30. So it's not because you are 30 now that you will never be in Bafana Bafana. I never said that. I never said that. But you have to look in the future. You know, when you have a player now of 31, in two years, he will be 33. Will he be able to play Afghan when he has 33? Some players, yes. But other players, no. So you have to be prepared for that. You have to be prepared. So, I, we will see. Again, with my assistants, we will look at the list and we will, we will make choices and we will, we will put out some players. Uh, someone who is play, playing in uh, Azerbaijan in a club and he don't play there, I don't have to call him for Bafana Bafana because I'm sure he will not have the qualities to play here. So, this is a work to do also for the next months. And there will be players from abroad because it, it will be not a good thing that we leave them there if they are good players. So uh, I, will, I will do that work. And the first question was? No uh, other question. Uh, his other question quote was that if you identified your entire technical team apart from the assistants, uh, physical trainer, what? Uh, yes, I think um, I will have a, a medical team. That is for sure. So um, I think it's not to me now to declare which will be that medical team. We are uh, um, starting to, to, to make it. Uh, and, and it's possible it will be the same team that, uh, that, it was, that was before. So, uh, again, this is something we have to talk about it. Uh, I have to, to talk with the doctor, with the physiotherapists, and so on and so on. If they have the same idea that I have, when they don't follow there, Again, you have a problem. You have a problem. So I work this direction, and the medical staff is working this direction. How you are going to have results? Never. So we have to discuss that. We have to talk with them and see, look, I like to work like that, if you agree with that. Yeah? And, and that it's, it's, it's for also the, the, the guys, the logistics guys, the security guys. Okay. We will talk with them and we said, uh, I expect from you that.
Can you do that? And if he said, and if he's, he's honest, and he said, no, coach, this is difficult. Okay, I'm sorry. I will take another one then. Because this is important again, that you are a team, and that everyone knows what his responsibility is, and where we are working to. I don't go to work, today I do this, and tomorrow I go that, and then I do this, and then I do that. No. We go. And it's the same for the players. If there are players who have a problem to be on the bench, okay, they tell me, and I will, I will respect that. But this is not a player who will be Bafana Bafana. Because those players are important. And if you are not motivated because you are on the bench and I need you, we will not play good. And if I can, for the last time, and then I shut my mouth about Cameroon, but if I can uh, take the example of Cameroon, you know all, all of you Abu Bakr. Good, a good striker. He, he didn't play much. But he was very important in the semi-final against Ghana. He gave the last pass to Basago 2-0. He was on the bench. He came in, in the, in the half time. And the final against Egypt, he was on the bench. And he came in on half time. And he made the winning goal. And that's what I want to achieve also with Bafana Bafana. Those guys who are on the bench are important. And if you don't like to be on the bench, you are not motivated. And if you need to come in, you will have a problem and I will have a problem because I will have a player who is not motivated. So I have to discuss that with the players too. You are one team and it's not because you are on the bench that you are, no, no. You are, you are as important as the one who was playing. And it counts for all the stuff. I think I answered the question. All right, uh, that was uh, Hugo Bruch. He's the newly appointed... I've got one question for the coach and just a bit of clarity for the C from the CEO. And, um, because, uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry because the coach, the, the previous question was asked. Little question, little question. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> very, very. <laughs> the previous question, uh, CEO, the coach was asked about, was about the, um, the assistant coach. So maybe just for clarity purposes, uh, because he knows very little about uh, local assistant coaches, uh, what criteria has been followed um, in bringing forward that candidate or candidates that uh, he has to choose from? And, and also, Coach, I think you will agree with me that uh, South African club football is stronger than in Cameroon. Um, that's why South African... The, the league games. You know, the, the, the local league competition. And, uh, yes, and, yeah, also, and, okay. also, and also the clubs. Uh, yeah. We've got three clubs playing in CAF competitions yeah, yeah. in the quarterfinals this weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how does that fit in, in your uh, bigger uh, approach? Um, especially, especially saying that um, they can even go further to play in the finals. Um, what I, what I, I think um, is very important also in my position is uh, the contact with the local coaches. Um, and this is something also that I will do in the future. I will call them if it's possible. I will call them to Johannesburg and we will um, be one day together and we will discuss about football. Because I, I, I find it very important. I did it in Cameroon too. Um, uh, and uh, I learned a lot that day. But also the local coaches learned a lot about the way I was working. And if the connection is not good with the local coaches as the coach of Bafana Bafana, you have a problem. So... Um, I will have a meeting with them and we will talk about football. We will talk about the players. Um, I think um, they expect that also. I have to respect the local coaches. I have to respect them. So I think it's very important that we have contact and we will do it in the, in the future. So I know that um, the league here is different than the league in Cameroon.
Uh, that, is, uh, that is for sure. Um, and there are big clubs in this country. So um, it's very important because I know a little bit also uh, the pressure sometimes that came from those clubs. Um, so therefore it's important that the contact is good. And um, I will see how I, I will deal with that because we live in COVID uh, time. So this is not uh, easy to have contact with to this one and this one and this one. And this. So we have to arrange that. But um, what's important uh, is that, that I will have contact, I will have meeting with some people and that they know the way of working and that from that side the pressure will be less than it is than it was in the past. There was an exception, <laughs> exception which was the, directed to the CEO. If you can just take that CEO. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> thanks, Mr. Chumavi. Uh, as the co just said, is working with the committee. Of course, the committee had its own criteria and the co just emphasized it should be someone who will add value. It should be someone who has experience. So he will be continuing to engage with uh, the technical committee and uh, they will be talking to the candidates uh, in terms of the criteria. As the coach had said, he's working with the technical committee to ensure that they identify someone who has experience, who meet both uh, what the coach wants and what the technical committee wants for the future of this country. Thank you, CEO. Can we take the last round of questions? Last round of questions. Just show your hands. So, so it will be... Namsa, before you give it to him, it should be one, two, three. So one, two, three, and then we close the, the uh, and, uh, <laughs> four, four. Uh, thank you. Uh, welcome, Coach. Junior Mtembu from Supersports. Now, you've been coaching for a good 30-plus years now, um, Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. Can you tell us, do you think this is your toughest job yet? What the... Do you think this job that you have now as Bafana Bafana coach, yeah. do you believe this is your hardest job so far in your whole career? Ask me that in one year. I don't know. No. <laughs> it will be tough, but you know, if you are um, a coach of a national team, it's always tough because people like results. So and when you need results, it's a tough. It's tough to do. It's uh, but but. Um, again, if it, this is the toughest job I had, again, ask me the question uh, one year, in one year and I will answer it. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Charles Barlow from the Soweto newspaper. Coach, welcome to the country. Just two short questions here. How long is the duration of your contract? And you seem to have a, a good vision for Bafana Bafana. What makes you confident that you will last that long? Because the coaches that were before you except for a very short stint, and then they were fired. Mm, and Coach, um, were you on the verge of joining DR Congo and you made a U-turn and joined Bafana Bafana? Can you, can you, then you, can, you can repeat a little bit because I didn't understand. Uh, <laughs> but, Mr. <laughs> you didn't need it. <laughs> Mr. Paloy, can you please come again and make it short so that the coach can understand? <laughs> Sorry, I'll speak slow, Coach. Um, welcome to the council. <laughs> How long is the duration of your contract? We just want to hear from you. And you seem to have a very good and nice vision about what you will implement for Wafana Wafana. But my worry is the coaches that were hired before you only served for a very short period and they were fired. What makes you confident that you will last that long in this job? And lastly, were you on the verge of joining DR Congo and then you decided to drop them and join Wafana Wafana? Can you confirm that? First of all, uh, um, about the contract, uh, I don't give comment. And secondly? Secondly, uh, Coach, is that he asked that uh, you have a very good vision about uh, Wafana Wafana. But do you think you will last long because uh, there is a history that most... <laughs> <laughs> this is life of a coach. You can tell me? I can tell you either. You know, uh, a life of a coach is, um, depends on results. So we will see. 
And this uh, last question was that, uh, is it true that you were on the verge of joining DRC before you came to South Africa, before you signed with Wafana Wafana? I'm sure. Were you on the verge of signing with DRC Congo before you signed with Oh. <laughs> you know, there were, um, how can you call it? Uh, I, I didn't have contact, but I knew there was interest. But I can assure you that uh, the day um, I get uh, a phone call from my manager that South Africa was interested, that uh, I had no doubt. Yes, Namsa, next question. You understand? So uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be here. So the other interests, when South Africa comes and Bafana, Bafana comes, my choice was quickly made. Thank you, Coach. Coach, bonjour. Uh, Radio France Internationale, Romain Chanson. On va, refaire la, on va refaire la question en français, s'il vous plaît, concernant oh, oui. la... We'll take that one question vous and, uh, and Joe, the, Joe, the manager, who translate. Oh, yeah, speak. Oh, yeah. Parlez uh, un peu plus fort, alors. Donc, je vais insister sur la question de la RDC. Uh, you put your mask off, it's bad. Okay. Permettez-moi per, permettez d'insister sur la question du, du Congo, puisqu'on a lu la lettre très déçue de la fédération qui vous attendait, vous, avez été, vous étiez attendu euh, tout simplement à, à Kinshasa. Qu'est-ce qui a fait que vous n'y êtes pas allé je, je me permets d'insister. Ben je, je viens vous dire, euh, euh, si vous maybe, avez le choix... Peut-être, coach, si vous pouvez juste dire ce qu'il dit. Vous savez, quand vous avez le choix... So in French, please. It's for Radio France International. So. It, was, it was in French. Yes. Yeah, and I, I, will, I will do it in English then afterwards. Coach, pourquoi vous n'êtes pas allé... Oui, oui, oui. Je vais répondre en français et après en anglais. Mais je vais dire la même chose. Si vous avez le choix, c'est un luxe pour un coach. Hein? Parce que tu n'as pas souvent le choix entre... Euh, des bons projets. Donc, je sais très bien que l'RDC était un très bon projet. Et vous, Mais... avez, vous avez été rattrapé par la Manche, parce que vraiment, on vous attendait en RDC. Ça s'est joué dans les dernières heures, peut-être les derniers jours. Parlez-nous un peu des, des coulisses qui ont fait que votre choix a plus balancé pour l'Afrique du Sud. Oui, mec. Écoutez, c'est comme je viens de dire. Hein. Si vous avez un choix, si vous avez un choix, si à un certain moment, OK, à RDC... Ah, mais aussi l'Afrique du Sud. Tu dois faire le choix. Et, et je dois dire que l'RDC, euh, euh, le, le vrai contact entre l'RDC et moi a été très tard. Hein. Donc au moment qu'il y avait déjà contact avec, euh, avec l'Afrique du Sud. Donc j'ai dû faire le choix, c'est tout. Tard Donc, tard et, je, et je comprends qu'ils sont déçus. Je comprends qu'ils sont déçus. Voilà. Que, et, qu et sinon, je n'ai pas plus de commentaires à donner. C'est le choix que j'ai fait. So, so Coach. he want, he asked me why I, I choose uh, for uh, South Africa, and I said, uh, is, uh, it's a luxury as a coach when you can choose. You don't have a choice every time. Um, and, and okay, it's a choice. It's my choice. And why not uh, Congo? And why South Africa? Okay, this is a choice that I made. And, and, and this is the whole comment I have to do to give on that. Coach, I'll, I'll make an arrangement between you and him for one-on-one, uh, -on -one, but outside this uh, conference, I'll organize that. Yeah, okay, but uh, thank you, coach. you understand that he's a French, that I, but I translated in English. I didn't say something else in French. Don't uh, tell me. <laughs> You, you close this uh, proceedings. Okay, for you know everything. Uh, I hope to see you back uh, a little bit no, later. Mana, mana mkul, mana. There, there is, Another question. There is mana one question, mkul. one more question. Manam Kul. Short one, eh? Huh? <laughs>
Coach, Coach, just Temba Shabalala, Chose FM Sports. Coach, just a quick one on you. I'm, I'm looking at you, the, 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 the homework that you've done on South Africa, on Bafana Bafana, while you were not the coach of Bafana Bafana. You seem to even know the times that we considered goals and tournaments and all of that. But what, what made you, just to add to the question, what made you think that you can change the minds of South Africans that did not qualify for a 24 team Africa, <laughs> Af 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 AFCON? then you think that you can actually make us understand that you will take us further as a nation mm -hmm. because the fact remains that South Africans have no hope, have lost everything on Bafana Bafana. You know, you know um, and I said it already, first thing is hard working and uh, analyzing, very important, analyzing. And therefore, it was important, first of all, that I have a, a South African um, assistant. This is important because he knows what happens with Bafana Bafana, what happens with the players, uh, how the players are, what's the culture, and so on. Looking at the games, eh, I, I asked the games, and I will do it in the next days of weeks, uh, I want to see the two games against Ghana, the two games against Sudan. What went wrong in that game? And then you can analyze and they can see, okay, for example, my defense is not good. I need, on that position, I need someone more offensive or more defensive. Um, oh, in the midfield, uh, there is a lot of, uh, of losing ball. We don't have a player who, uh, who can keep the ball. Uh, so you analyze. And from the moment you have your analysis done, you start looking after players. Maybe you have the players already, but there is a problem mentally. And I think, I said it already, I think there is a problem. Because when I see the players, and I see the quality of the players, then it's not normal that uh, South Africa is not qualified for Afghan in Cameroon. When I see that in the first 10, 15 minutes, you always receive a goal, yeah, then you are not ready from the beginning of the game. When you, I see that against tough teams, like Ghana, like Sudan, Ghana is a good team, Sudan is a team, they are working, they are fighting, they are playing with such a heart, we have problems against those teams. So I need players who are strong enough to fight there. Maybe in such, t in such games, it's not so important to have the best football qualities, but the best mental qualities. So this is analyzing. And I, I would be surprised if I see what we need, that we can't find it in a country as South Africa. This has to be impossible. We have to find that. But it's a process. It's a process. So, and therefore, one hour ago, I think, I ask you also to be patient as a media. Because every time when it's not like you expect it, and you start to kill everyone, you don't progress. You can criticize. I have no problem when you criticize. But try to be realistic also. I have not a problem if you said, okay, that player, I think, is not good enough for Bafana Bafana. I have not a problem with that. But I have a problem if you start, yes, but what the coach is doing, and he's doing this, and this is not the good uh, way to work, and so on. Give me time. And that's what I ask. I promised you not to talk about Cameroon, but I do it again. <laughs> um, that's what I ask also on the media when we went to Afghan in Gabon. Please, give me the time to prove, to show you. And they did. And you know what? After Afghan, there was a delegation of journalists who came to me and they said, Coach, we apologize the way we treated you. Because now we see how you work and how the results are. So that's it's what I want from you also. Not more. You don't have to tell me that the coach is good and the coach is good. No, no, no. Hey, do it.
I will be happy. But if they, you have to criticize it, just criticize, because it can help me also to stay sharp, to know, oh, it, this has to be better. So a way of speaking, you, have part, you are part of the team. You are part of the team. But be realistic and don't uh, be in a situation for, ah, oh, this is nothing every time. <laughs> so you can't progress, so you can't progress, but because progressing is to have failure and to learn from about the failures and then to do better the next time. Thank you. Very much, Coach, for this engagement. Uh, and thank you, CEO. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. There will be a photo opportunity with the coach and CEO uh, right here. Thank you.